What is happening guys, welcome back. So, another episode on the workshop build. Thank you all so much for the amazing comments and feedback and everything on the last video. It was a major, major milestone, getting it all insulated, boarded, getting the ceiling mostly sorted. We've still got that end to sort out, but we won't worry about that yet. We need to go and buy some more insulation. So, it's currently Tuesday morning. Um, yesterday, I went and got the floor grinder, hired one from a local hire center. Um, which didn't quite, I don't know, it wasn't as good as I expected it to be. Um, and the way that I'd spoken to a few different people and they were like, yeah, it's not that bad, it'll go quick, you'll do it. It really hasn't done a lot. Um, and I'm just gonna sit down this morning and weigh up whether it's worth hiring that for another day, buying another head and having another go on the floor or it's worth leaving it where it is and just um, leveling compound in the floor. I really don't know, but this is what it looks like at the minute. So it's still got the tamping, but as you can see, it has taken and flattened the top of it off. This was all really quite raised um, and up to basically up to a point. Um, so it has taken quite a lot off. We've got areas over here where it has flattened it down uh, quite a bit. Um, it's yeah. We, we, we did the whole area apart from this bit here, which is where we're gonna be cutting out for the lift. Over here isn't as good as over the other side because this is where the, um, the head started really wearing down and it just wasn't as good as it was when we were over there. So I've got to work out what we're going to do with that. Um, I think levelling compounding it is going to cost a lot of money. Um, but then at the same time, I don't think having that grinder with another head for another day, I don't really think we're going to cut much more of this floor down because obviously as it gets down, we're cutting more material that way. I don't know, I don't know, I really don't know. Um, I could really do with somebody that does this for a living to come and help me, or come and do it, but I spoke to a company yesterday because I was like, it's not working, and they said that they could come and do it, but it would be, it'd take them around um, three to five days, depending on how bad it was, to grind the floor down, and they'd want 850 pounds a day, so we won't be doing that one. Um, I think worst case, if we have to le level in compound it, it's probably gonna cost us 600 quid in compound, so we might have to do that. But anyway, what is happening today is the guys are coming to fit the roller shutter. So we're gonna have the roller shutter on um, going up and down. Um, and then I think what I might do is just screw a board up to the personnel door um, so that we can then start sort of leaving things in here and it being a little bit more secure. Um, but yeah, they're coming to fit that door. I'm gonna work out what we're gonna do with the floor. Um, and then we've got to work other bits and pieces out. This week, I need to go and get some timber and some boarding for the toilet and everything and the back of the kitchen where that's going to go. We need to start ordering parts for that and get that done. Um, but yeah, when the guys get here, I don't think they really want to be on camera and whatever, talking. So all I'm going to do is ask if I can just leave the GoPro in the corner on time lapse while they fix. I think it'd be a nice thing to see. Um, but yeah. The next thing we'll do is you'll hopefully see them fitting the door on time lapse and then you'll see me after and we'll see what else we can do in this episode. So, guys from Trojan Roller Doors in Leicester have been and done their thing and we've got the door fitted now in the unit in all of its anthracite glory. If I can find this out of my pocket somewhere. We've got a keypad on the wall in there and we've also got two key fobs and if I press... <laughs> Look at that! So we've got key fobs as well, so we can open it without having to be inside. There we go. Roller shutter is on, looking mega in a nice anthracite grey. 
and then inside. Yeah. It's still got a bit of gaps up either side of it because the posts in the building, as we already knew, is a little bit twisted. Um, so we need to spray foam them and silicon them and sort them out, but it isn't a problem. But it's in. And we've got a door. I just need to now go and pick up the personnel door and we are essentially watertight and secure and we can start leaving kit and things in it. Oh, I can't tell you how excited this makes me and how much I've been looking forward to this moment of getting the roller shutter fitted to the building. Oh, I'm just going to keep opening and closing that thing because he's <laughs> excited. Right, another major, major part done. Massive thank you to the guys at Trojan Roller Doors in Leicester for sorting out as a good deal and coming out and fitting it so quickly as well. So happy with it, so, so happy with it. Right, I don't know what we're gonna do next. I've gotta make a decision on what we need to do next. There's many, many different jobs I need to have a think about it, but that's a major thing done. Roller shutter is installed. Fully obsessed with playing with my new door. Who'd have thought that <laughs> a door on a remote would be so much fun? But yeah, oh man, I'm so happy with that door. So good, we just still need to, like I think we've mentioned already, need to go and pick the personnel door up, but that is for another day. So for today, um, I went and sorted out some more insulation yesterday. And what I wanna get on with now is sort out getting this end insulated, getting the boards on the wall, and getting the roof all sorted out, stapled up, done and finished, so that essentially then the walls, the roof are dealt with. We've got a couple of bits on these bits to cut as well. Trim all the uh, roofing sheets back. Um, then what my plan I think is gonna be is we are gonna either use what's left over if we've got some offcuts or we'll get some more. We're gonna cut some, say, 100 mil rips and put skirting at the bottom to finish them to the floor and then possibly put skirting or or whatever you want to call it, around the top, just to finish the top edge, pull the um, roof, the sheeting back for the roof to tidy that edge up as well. Um, or at least that's what I'm thinking, that's my plan. So, trusty GoPro, scissor lift is charged up, radio is ready to go on. Let's hit the time lapse and get this dealt with. And it's another thing done, hopefully, it's not going to do again. Good morning. So yesterday we got a little bit done, not as much as I wanted to get done um, because for some reason we're having problems with the scissor lift in that it won't move, won't go up, won't go down, won't do anything. It's really, really annoying me. Uh, really, really did mess the day up yesterday. But one little thing that I did get done was that you might be able to see around the edge of the roof. We have tidied um, the edge of the roof up, which you've already seen in the time lapse. Um, I wanted to get all the ceiling this end finished off as well, but we've still got all this hanging down because um, I can't get up there with a scissor lift, but the walls, <clears throat> this end is now all boarded and all the little bits that were down the end or down that long wall um, are now done, boarded up. Um, so that's ready for everything to be done that needs to be done. Um, I've got to nip out now and go and pick some timber up for the toilet and for the kitchen area and all of that lot. Um, but the, and the sparkies are on their way over to um, yeah, come and carry on and make a start. So Jim from Cal Electrical contacted me the very first episode um, 
subscribed to the channel for quite a while, said, love what we were doing. Um, was there anything they could do to, yeah, help get involved and come over and offer their services? So I've um, bought all the stuff. Um, they're coming over to do that, get that all sorted. Hopefully we're gonna have some sockets on today. Possibly not the lights if we can't get the scissor lift working, but as soon as I get back from getting the timber, we'll have a look at the scissor lift. I'm gonna leave the key fob somewhere for them. Uh, they can come in, get started while I'm out, and then we'll get back see what they've done and see if we can get a scissor lift working. Right, timber is acquired in the back of the van, ready to go. So that's, yeah, yet another job that we can now get on with. Um, you know, save us a tiny little bit of money in screed because we're going to end up needing screed the floor. Cow Electrical are back. And we've got the dream team are on it. Getting the place wired up, get some sockets on so we can get rid of that extension lead that's been trailed up the garden since what, Christmas? Um, so yeah, get them on. What I'm gonna do now, we've managed to get the scissor lift working as well. Um, I spoke to the company that we got it from, which we thought it was because the battery was dead. Um, we had it in charge for 24 hours. Um, light was all green and it was all doing what it should do. It still wasn't working, so there's a little sensor, height sensor on the scissor section. Took that all apart, unplugged it, plugged it back in. Seemed to work. So that's now working. We're gonna get all of the insulation up in the roof, get this all pulled back. And then I'm gonna look at starting to getting the lights mounted onto the ceiling as well. Another busy day, let's head it. And there we have it, another storming day on the workshop. So I've been round and as I showed you a minute ago, we've now got all that end done and I've gone round and finished off the top edge of the workshop. He's done all the way around now, it's nice and neat. Up above the door is now insulated and I've just pulled the roofing sheet down onto the timber that's above the door temporarily until I can get up there and put some boarding up that we can paint so it all matches through. Cal Electrical uh, did their thing. We've got all the sockets on the walls, all the way down there. We've got a 16 amp one there for the lift. All goes round. All of the sockets are now on, live and working. I then went round and got the batten lights mounted to uh, the ceiling as well. They're all mounted. Uh, Jim started running where he wants the um, conduit to go as well. I'm gonna finish that off. We'll get all that conduit in and done down this bottom run. Then what I'm thinking is we've got somewhere, we've got, got some um, black heat proof or whatever it is, cable, that what I am think we're gonna do is we're gonna run from the bottom light up through the membrane, up to the next light, hopefully up and over to the next light and then down to that light. So we've only got one run of conduit running um, down along the ceiling. I've also had my early Valentine's gift from Abigail. She wrote me a nice little message on the box. Just here to Dan, happy Valentine's Day, love Ab. And the gift is a toilet. What else could you want for Valentine's Day more than your own toilet for your workshop? Although it is kind of a little selfish present to Abigail as well. Because if I've got a toilet in here, it means that I'm doing business in the house a little bit less, which is, yeah, a win-win. So. We got the toilet, we got that all opened out. Yesterday got it offered in where we're gonna be putting it. And then I made a start of laying the timber out on the floor, sort of feet, seeing what the fate space felt like. Make sure you got enough room with your knees and the wall when you sat on the throne as well. So that is gonna be a job probably coming up in the next video. Um, yeah, great progress, loads more done. And what we're gonna do now, well, I'm gonna pull the van in, that's what, this is down on the floor for. We're going to pull the van in, um, leave it in here overnight because it's supposed to freeze tonight and I've got to get up at about five o'clock-ish to leave at six tomorrow morning to head down to see Rusty Lee. So Lee from Rusty Lee, um, beds and swivels. Um, he very, very kindly donated a personnel door to the project. So we've got to go down to Hereford and pick that up. So yeah, we'll get the van in and I'll see you at some point in the morning when we're heading down there. We 
Good morning, guys. So, after a two and a bit hour drive, um, we've arrived at Rusty Lee. The van's lined up and the unit's over there. We literally just pulled up. Um, I'll head in now, um, go and sort of introduce myself to Hello, because I've not actually met anyone from here. It's just been online. Um, and yeah, we might go have a walk around, see what they're about, because uh, yeah, they do some very impressive stuff. So, let's go and introduce ourselves, see what the crack is. Right, so we've been in, introduced ourselves, had a quick wander around and now we've come down just come and get the door out of where it is and I've caused chaos and we've had to move loads of stuff out of the way but it's coming down now I'm not sure how we're going to get this out the other end or fit it because it's a steel door and there's only me and Abigail at home but I'm sure we've done more difficult things I'm sure we'll make it work right door is acquired sat in the van um, it isn't actually as heavy as we expected it to be me and Abigail will be fine lifting it out um, and I think again it fitted well equally be fine as well so that is loaded up let's go and have a quick look around what's going on inside Lee's is a bit camera shy I don't want to get on camera so we'll just go in have a quick walk around um, yeah and I'll see if I can show you some bits um, if not hit up www.rustily.com um, yeah they do swivel bases uh, they do uh, rock and roll beds um, they also are the ones who make frames for Skyline roofs as well. Um, so yeah, go and check them out. Let's go and see if we can have a look around. I don't really like filming in businesses when people are working. It just feels a bit weird. So these are a couple of beds that they make. This one is a crash tested bed and this one is a non crash tested. This is a full width, whereas this is a three quarter. You can see the substantial difference in the metal size on a crash tested. So a non crash tested, it's still safe. It's just not got that certification. Um, but yeah, impressive place. So we're talking about swivels a minute ago. They do the singles, which are the ones that I've got in the van, but these are the new double swivels. So these are for if you've got a double passenger seat in a T5, you can swivel it around. Um, yeah, new design that they've done. More parts, who knows? There's just stuff, metal and parts everywhere. It's very impressive. The guys have even got their own in-house powder coating plant as well. So start to finish, it's all done in there. Hopefully we can use some of that footage with the radio being on, but yeah, proper impressive place. And it's even got a couple more vehicles in ready, or bodies in ready for uh, crash testing. So yeah, the M1 testing, you bolt it into the vehicle, it goes onto a jig and it all gets pulled and stress tested and make sure that it's safe and it's not gonna rip out and all that lot. Um, so yeah, he's got them in stock, ready for his next one. He's just opening up now. Uh, some containers to show me the stock they've got of Skyline roof frames. So we've got one container full of Skyline parts. We've got another one which is full of VW parts, as every VW person has uh, something full of parts. A couple of Skyline bits in there and then classic, the older camper bed parts. Another shelf ready for testing. And then in here we've got more Skyline roof frames either ready for powder coat or finished and powder coated. And then in another unit that they've got, we've got a stock, another load of stock of beds, be it raw, ready for powder or powdered, ready for, I imagine sending out and yeah. upholstery. And then in a little corner over here, a grand sat playing with hinges, hinges. for the Skyline roofs all get bolted and fixed together which are the same ones that we've got on ours assembled with love and care yeah <laughs> gone are the days of having to deburr stuff by hand it leaves you showing me this machine so this has got a load of if you like stones ceramic in it ceramic stones ceramic polishing you know if you've got polished wheels there's a three or four stage process i think for those this is a single stage which basically you put the parts in turn it on it vibrates and it takes the burrs off without any of the hassle. So in this unit as well, again, there's just stuff everywhere. There's just got stuff, showing me stuff everywhere. These are the um, support frames. This is the one that's at the back of the roof. 
in my van, so it's a Skyline support frame um, in the container that we just showed you. They were the ones that were for the front, and then down here are the frames or the supports or whatever they are that goes under your van. So if you've got a crash tested bed that's bolted in, this frame is what goes under the floor um, and um, you, it bolts through and bolts out into the chassis as well. And I mean, that is big fucking great. What's that? Five mil, four, five mil steel plate. So when you're on the forums or whatever on Facebook, you can see that people have had these beds fitted with a little 50 mil square washer bolted to the floor they're not doing it right. That really isn't safe and it isn't the right way to do it. Hit up Rusty Lee, they do it properly. And it's a good bit of kit. And we've just been chatting and he's just said to me, oh, I've got a robot welder. So we're going to have a look at that. I've got to say, getting out and coming to places like this and seeing the way that people make things and take pride in what they do and make some really, really well fabricated things has got to be one of the highlights of my job. I love learning, I love seeing how people do things. And yeah, it just, uh, yeah, I feel a bit, I feel quite privileged to be able to get out and see people making things like this. It really is good. Right, let's so see if this robot welder's on. So the robot welder is behind this. The actual welder itself is sat out there. And then in here, it's got, yeah, robot arm and then a jig that welds it all up. And what comes off of it is welds like that. Look at that. Absolutely amazing. So, his lads are just on break at the minute. He's gonna get the lads to set it up and he's gonna let us see it running. Oh man, stuff like this. So cool, so, so cool. Finished article. Nearly as good as my welding. <laughs> there we go. Door is acquired and sat in the back of the van. Our little trip down to uh, Rusty Lee continues. We're on the way home now. Um, got a two and a bit hour drive to get back and then hopefully we can get that fitted this afternoon and get that workshop nice and secure. But I want to say a massive, massive thank you to Lee from Rusty Lee Beds for contacting me and wanting to donate the door to the project. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks for showing us around the place as well. Really impressive. Some absolutely brilliant products that are made really, really well. Like I said, go and follow them on Instagram and also go and check out the website as well. Right. Let's head home. Let's see if I can get this door fitted. Hopefully, the hole I've got in the wall is the correct size. Well, that wasn't actually that difficult. Um, door is in, we got the hole roughly about right. Um, it's a little out of square, um, but a little packer in, shimmed it. We've got it in the right place. But door is fitted into the opening. Um, it's now all fixed in correctly. We've got it all fixed into place. I just need to go around and put all the bungs back in. Um, yeah, it's fixed in, it opens, it closes. Um, you got the emergency exit bar there, which is sound to be fair to get in and out, it'll work. Yeah, it'll work and do what it needs to do. Um, the one thing that we do need to sort out is we need to get some vinyl, some anthracite vinyl to wrap the door 
to match the shutter because um, on the planning um, it is the anthracite colour um, and I might change this out external handle because it had rather a, a, a lever handle if you like but that is on it is fitted it how's it going turn the lock it locks it can't get in and it, yeah it does a job if we pull the shutter down the button is don't get old electric shutter electric shutter does not get old shut the door Lock the door, shut us down, and we've now got a secure unit. Oh, I honestly cannot tell you how happy and how excited it makes me that we've got a secure shutter. And I'm not going to pack my kit away every night, I'm not going to move it, I'm not going to take it in somewhere else. We can leave the kit in there, door is locked, and it's all safe and away. Oh man, so good. What have we done with the keys? Anyway, that is, I think, pretty much all we're going to get done in this episode. Um, we've got plenty more stuff going on next week. Uh, the guys from Cal, oh, the guys from Cal Electrical are back on Tuesday to finally get all the lighting on and sorted. I've got a few enabling bits to sort out. I'm going to just to speed it up a bit. I'm going to get the conduit in. I'm going to run the cables um, through the roof. Um, so hopefully. In the next video, one of the first things or early things we'll do is we'll get the lights on. I'm going to get the throne installed and get that all nice and working. We're going to get the stud work up for the um, toilet area and for the kitchen area. Yeah. Progress is progress. Thank you all for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Yeah, we'll catch you in the next one. Until next time, guys, enjoy. Enjoy.